أعطي الكلمة الآن لمندوب الجمهورية العربية. I now give the floor to the representative of the Syrian Arab Republic. Thank you, Mr. President. The Syrian government examined the 48th monthly report of the Under Secretary General for Humanitarian Affairs. Yesterday morning, and as usual, we sent a formal letter to the Secretary General and to the President of the Security Council to present the position of the Syrian government on the current report. We are realistic, Mr. President. We know well that the United Nations is not a charitable organization. This is clear because it has failed to implement the principles of the Charter and international law since its inception. And the Palestinian question is a case in point. There is also another failure by the United Nations in Iraq, Libya, Yugoslavia, Grenada, for those who have forgotten Grenada, Nicaragua, and the list goes on. But I hope we can preserve the United Nations as an organization since it has lost the charitable part of its mandate. I would like to make the following points. One, the Syrian government is committed fully to the principles of international law, international humanitarian law, as well as Syrian laws and the Syrian constitution, which all stipulate the responsibility for the Syrian government to ensure the safety and security of Syrian citizens and to protect them from terrorist groups. Two, the current report, just like the previous ones, continues to have a great flaw, namely that the authors of the report continue to rely on politicized resources, open sources, and unreliable figures. At the same time, the report continues to ignore credible government sources and even reports issued by the representatives of the United Nations in Syria. Those representatives and in their reports submitted to the United Nations in New York acknowledge the efforts of the Syrian government and its cooperation on the humanitarian issue. However, it seems that all of these information are not mentioned in the report, miraculously. Three, the Syrian government condemns the failure of the authors of the report and the uh, representatives of OCHA and the Human Rights Commission, especially after the adoption of the resolution 2401, their failure to refer to the Turkish aggression against the Syrian city of Afrin. This aggression has claimed the lives of many people, including women and children, has destroyed a number of public facilities, and has led to a great humanitarian crisis. However, it seems that Afrin is not similar to eastern Ghouta or eastern Aleppo or Fuang Freya. Four, the Syrian government fully rejects the disregard by the authors of the report to refer to the impact of the so-called international coalition. This coalition, which has claimed the lives of hundreds of civilians and members of the Syrian forces who are fighting ISIL. The coalition has committed two new massacres yesterday, which claimed the lives of 29 civilians and injured dozens, including women and children, in the villages of Shafa and Dahra al-Luni in eastern Derzor. 
it seems that the international coalition is focused on this part of the resort because it has civilians that do not host the terrorists of ISIL and al Nusra Front. The coalition has also destroyed the city of Raqqa, as the representative of the Russian Federation just said. My government calls once again for dismantling this illegitimate coalition and to stop its crimes against the Syrian people immediately. The Russian military has issued a communique today saying that the areas under the control of the allies and agents of the United States in Syria are witnessing currently the worst humanitarian crisis in the country. And these areas have become black holes, just like the black holes in space. Mr. President, regarding the situation in eastern Ghouta, the Syrian government believes that the current deterioration in the situation is due to the fact that terrorist groups in that area have launched attacks against residential areas and military points. They have launched more than 2,180 missiles and mortar against the city of Damascus until yesterday. These attacks have claimed the lives of 66 civilians and injured 474 others. The government forces have been forced to respond to these attacks and to carry out its constitutional responsibility in protecting its civilians and its citizens. The government of my country condemns the use by the authors of the report of the term besieged areas when considering the situation in eastern Ghouta. They continue to deliberately ignore, under pressure from influential countries in the Council and outside, to ignore the fact that people in eastern Ghouta are besieged from within by the different terrorist groups within Ghouta. These terrorist groups are exploiting civilians and using them as human shields. They are seizing humanitarian assistance, monopolizing them, and distributing them to their supporters or selling them at exuberant prices, as was the case in eastern Aleppo. We regret the failure of the authors of the report to refer to the suffering of thousands of kidnapped people in Ghouta who are held hostage at the hands of terrorist groups, including women, children, and elderly. These people have been kidnapped from their homes and places of work and have been subjected to the worst form of torture. These people, civilians, including from Adra and from Latakia, have been kidnapped from their houses, from their homes, five years ago. The Syrian government also condemns the statements by the Secretariat and the Secretary General which continue to disregard the suffering of the civilians in the city of Damascus as a result of the missiles and mortars launched from terrorist groups from eastern Ghouta. The accusations by the authors of the report that the Syrian government is besieging Ghouta have been refuted consistently. These accusations have proven to be unfounded, as we have seen in recent reports, noting that the Saudi regime has provided, quote-unquote, aid and assistance to Eastern Ghouta in February. This proves that Eastern Ghouta is not besieged and that it is possible to access it, especially that terrorist groups in Ghouta continue to receive supplies and weapons from those governments who support terrorism, including the so-called Saudi assistance, humanitarian assistance, quote-unquote. Ladies and gentlemen, the Syrian government is committed more than any other party to protecting its citizens across Syria. In this regard, the Syrian government has taken all necessary measures to protect its citizens and to respond to the attacks of terrorist groups from eastern Ghouta. We have sought to protect these civilians 
from these terrorists by establishing a humanitarian corridor to ensure their exit from eastern Ghouta. We announced this humanitarian corridor only hours after the adoption of Resolution 2401. We announced this corridor to ensure their safety in cooperation with our friends and allies in Russia. And we have provided them with shelter, food, medicine, and medical care at the expense of the Syrian government, by the way, not at the expense of OCHA. We have also called on members of the armed groups to lay down their weapons and to cease their terrorist activities inside the residential areas and to engage in national reconciliation efforts. However, ladies and gentlemen, these terrorist groups, namely Al-Nusra Front, Jaish al-Islam, and Faylaq rahman have prevented civilians from reaching the corridor by force. As some of you may know, they have also sought to target this humanitarian corridor using mortar weapons after it was announced. As for the letter submitted by the terrorist Muhammad al -Lush, it is a clear indication that he rejects the exit of civilians from Ghouta. It is clear that he wants to use them as humanitarian and human shields. And there seems to be a new trend in the United Nations, a trend to circulate a letter from a terrorist group as a formal document, as an official document. This is a new invention at the United Nations. There is no respect to the member states concerned. We have followed closely the uh, adoption of Resolution 2401 and the statements today, and we can clearly say that the main goal behind the adoption of the resolution is not to reach a clear truce or ceasefire, as some may, may claim, or to protect civilians. The main goal was to use the Security Council once again to prevent any progress by the Syrian army and its allies in its fight against terrorist groups, these terrorist groups that target that are targeting the city of Damascus and I say that for the southern time how else can you explain the fact that the resolution fails to refer to any Security Council resolution on countering terrorism your resolution that you adopted a few days ago does not refer to any other resolution on counter terrorism how else can you explain the resistance by some members of the Council during negotiations on the text, their resistance and their refusal to uh, exclude ISIL and Nusra and other terrorist groups from the ceasefire? For many days, you have continued to negotiate this issue, whether to include ISIL or to exclude it. Mr. President, the false humanitarian propaganda on the situation in eastern Ghouta coincided with another campaign under the supervision of the U.S., a campaign claiming the use of chemical weapons again in Syria, in Syria, in areas under the exclusive control of terrorists, or rather, I should say, the White Helmets. The New York Times published today a report a la tantan, as they say, a childish report claiming that there is a uh, cooperation on the chemical issue between my country and the DPRK. A report on the first page of the New York Times. The report is in a full page. It seeks to tarnish the image of the Syrian government and the DPRK. And it ends by saying that this information is not substantiated. And I will read it in English. Though experts who viewed the report said the evidence it cited did not prove definitively that there was current continuing collaboration between North Korea and Syria on chemical weapons. I'm not from the New York Times. I'm reading this verbatim from the New York Times. Mr. President, it seems that the New York Times is not up to date on what is going on in the world. It seems that the New York Times doesn't know that the American vessel Cape Prey destroyed the chemical arsenal 
submitted by the Syrian government voluntarily after joining the CWC and the OPCW as a full member. This is old information, as you say in French, déjà vu. However, it seems that the New York Times has decided to address this issue today. I will read you a communique that we received just now. Information that I think you should take into consideration when you address once again the issue of the use of chemical weapons in Syria. And I tell you that terrorists will use chemical weapons in Syria. In the morning of February 20th, four days ago, or seven days ago, three Turkish trucks carrying chlorine entered the governorate of Idlib through the Bab al-Hawa crossing. And I think that the New York Times should verify this information. These trucks reached the city or the town of Loze in Idlib. Two of these trucks stopped in, in this town and a third continued its way. Information available to the Syrian government point to the fact that terrorists are currently preparing for a chemical weapon using the substance of chlorine at a large scale and to accuse the Syrian army of using these weapons. These terrorists have clear instructions from Turkish and foreign intelligence to fabricate this chemical weapon before the 13th of March of this year. The 13th of March. Why? Because on the 13th of March, the 87th session of the Executive Council of the OPCW will be held. The information I received just now, according to this information, the two trucks are currently in the town of Kalb Lauze, in the school of the town. Other terrorists are also currently in the school. They have turned the school into a warehouse for chemical weapons. As for the third truck, it is currently in a center belonging to the Hayat Tahrir al-Sham, who are Turkish agents in the northeastern part of Al-Habit town. A great number of terrorists are currently unloading the trucks in the town. We provide you with this information, and we are telling you that these terrorists, at the instructions of their operators, will use these chemical weapons before the 13th of March. In closing, Mr. President. The main responsibility for ceasing hostilities lies on those countries that have influence with terrorist groups in Ghouta and in other parts of Syria. They should compel these terrorist groups to stop their terrorist activities and to allow civilians to leave these areas voluntarily, in these areas which are used by these groups as a base to launch their terrorist attacks. Mr. President, there is a number of countries in this organization that are shedding crocodile tears over the humanitarian situation in Syria. Five countries. Unfortunately, some of them are members of the Council. They have invited member states to watch a movie for the Al-Nusra Front, or rather the White Helmets, two, in two days. In the